Well, the musical career originated up in Shemokin, up in the coal regions in my hometown, where, where there were many second generation, third generation European musicians and music was the order of the day. Either you played sports or you, you did music in the town. That, 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 was, that was your way of life. And I happened to might meet a, a band director who, uh, who had a trombone and uh, said, hey, you look like a kid who would do well with a trombone. Uh, why don't you try it? And it was a $13 trombone, uh, soldered together in every joint possible. And, but, it, but it enabled me to get into the uh, Shemokin High School Band at, uh, I guess it was about fifth grade, which was a real honor in those days. And then from there, we, we, uh, we had a little German band, and that was fun. We'd go play for picnics, and the only compensation was, uh, uh, was all the food we could eat, which was a bad thing for them to do for teenagers. But we, uh, we went from that one and started to play just a little bit of jazz. Uh, not much, there wasn't much available for kids our age. And from there into high school, into a, uh, into a high school jazz band, and along with the orchestra and the band and things like that. And it sort of all grew together. It, it was a thing that I, I wanted to be a jock, and I wanted to play sports, and I also wanted to be a musician, but the musician part won out. And, and uh, then I discovered uh, later on in life, uh, there's this wonderful thing called Dixieland. And boy, that was like getting hooked on heroin. It was, uh, it was love at first sight, uh, and, and uh, it was a form of music that was a happy music. It was a fun kind of thing to do. And the musicians were fun, the music was fun, and the people were fun. And I, I had often said to myself, gee, wouldn't that be a great thing to be down in New Orleans or be on a riverboat somewhere playing? And uh, part of it came to a truism uh, some years later when Kay and I uh, went down to New Orleans for our honeymoon way back in 1950. And that was a wonderful treat down there to see all of the, the, the blues locations and where all of this, this uh, originated. So it, it, this thing kept growing. It, it was something inside me that I wanted to play and wanted to play and uh, finally did get to, uh, to Macon, Georgia. Armstrong sent me there and uh, uh, there I found that they, there were no trombonists in town and had three wonderful jazz groups and played after hours stints there. Came back to Lancaster, met a great guy by the name of Tiny Wright who was Mr. Music in Lancaster. And Tiny got me interested in groups and uh, the old musical association out along the Lincoln Highway where we had jam sessions till three o'clock in the morning on, on Saturday nights after all the musicians finished playing. And uh, from there, they, uh, again, it was, it was a, a swing-based, a, a jazz-based music. Uh, and it wasn't really till some years later till I met my friend Don Goldstrom at Armstrong and he had written some shows that we did at the uh, Fulton Theater for the Republican Party that the big band came to fruition. All this time, though, the, the Dixieland and the small combo jazz was there. And uh, because we enjoyed do doing those, those GOP shows at the Fulton, particularly, I guess, because there was, there was a refrigerator full of beer in the basement for intermissions, and uh, we said, why don't we form a big band? And bingo, there it, 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 it took place. And uh, we borrowed Tiny Light's library. He had a musical library that had about uh, 150 numbers in it none of which of the 20 pieces that were there were in, in order at all, and that was our fee for borrowing it, so we put it back in order again. Played a job, somebody said, hey, why don't we do another one? And, and we, we found people in need of funds. And we said, we don't want to play professionally and dislodge the pro musicians out of jobs, but we do want to help these people, and people like the Osteopathic Hospital and the Lancaster General Hospital and all of the agencies in Lancaster, Everybody wanted to raise money, and many of them came to us and said, hey, can you help us? We said, sure, just, just uh, uh, give us a place to play, and we'll be delighted. And uh, we did so through for so many organizations over many, many years in Lancaster. As a matter of fact, we figured that we'd probably help to raise about a million dollars for these agencies. And that was very satisfying, but, but the, the whole deal was what... How, how can you help somebody and do something you love? And that was the combination. That was the mechanism that kept the, the band going. As a matter of fact, it's still going. It's, uh, they're going to have a, uh, another Beat the Winter Blas ball pretty soon in the Lancaster Country Club. And uh, that, that's the, the kind of thing to do is to, to uh, play the music that you like 
uh, for the people that you like, and, and, and you know, there, there's not much else to, in, in life as I see it. Okay, now just a general for the people out there that don't know this, how many years was this total that now you're retiring at age? Right, go ahead. Well, it was, uh, I, it, we actually started as w closest we configured was about 1969, which was when Don Goldstrom's uh, second series of shows at the uh, Fulton Theater for the Republican Party. As a matter of fact, you might want to be interested in a lovely cover for that. <clears throat> Dick Whitson, the artist from Armstrong, uh, did that cover. And it was for that show that we put a band together. And uh, that was it. So it's all those years, 40, 40, clo oh, close to 50 years, really. You, d you do a little, just to be sure that the chops uh, are in shape from either breakfast or lunch or dinner, what have you. And then maybe start with a little blues. And and you do things like that. You weave in around songs that you know, uh, honeysuckle rose. That one I like to do because my good pianist friend Jay Albert Schultz uh, and I do a honeysuckle rose thing together where we try to find a lady in the audience by the name of Rose and there's nothing more intimate than finding a lady by the name of Rose, putting your arm around her and singing about honeysuckle rose. And that's part of the whole fun of this thing too is, is, is uh, you, you don't take yourself seriously. Well, you do that you want to play well. You, 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 want, the, <clears throat> you want that to come, come out from you. But you don't want the people to think that you got a big high hat on and, and you're sitting there in your tux coat and things like that. Not that there's anything wrong with people doing that in music, but this is another another bag that we have. And there you have it, the blues. <laughs> 